Welcome to the shop, my friend Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's build video, I have a continuation of my Warhammer Dwarf Ironbreaker. I'm building his chest armor. Now, I wanna reiterate, this is a competition level style costume. Now, I don't compete anymore, but that's the amount of detail that I wanna put into this, as if I was competing. And that's gonna play big into today's video because with this chest armor, it's insanely detailed. Every single one of these strips is individually cut, sanded, and then glued together. Now, the thing that kind of stinks about that is eventually he's going to have some giant shoulder pads and a beard that are going to cover up a good chunk of this. So I know what you're asking yourself is, well, if that's the case, then why are you putting all these details into it? And it's because as an artist, I know it's there. And if you are utilizing a costume like this for a competition, that's kind of a big part of it as well. With a lot of the competitors that are out there and judges specifically, you hear the term flipping the seams when it comes to seamstresses. Well, that works for foam smiths as well because I'm one of those judges where I get out from behind the table, I will go up to a costume, I will lift sections, of course, with permission. I will lift sections up to check and see how it's put together, how it's finished off on the underside. If you're in this costume and you raise your arms, does it look all professionally done on the interior as well, or is it a little ragged? Now, I don't feel that that needs to be done for everybody, and that's not how everybody cosplays. Again, that's just my way of cosplaying. This is the engineering side that I love. This is the type of thing where I want people to be impressed, to lift up the beard and go, oh my God, he actually did all the armor underneath of this that I'm never even gonna see as well. Now, when it comes to the chest armor, I'm really excited about this video because it shows more of my kind of breakdown process of how I go about putting something like this together. Now, with this build, I am going to include PDFs of the final templates that I kind of used for this chest armor, but I'm gonna tell you as a builder, you're gonna need to modify those to fit you specifically, and you might need to change some stuff around. It's not gonna be as straightforward as my helmet build, which is part A, part B, no problems. This was built on the fly. It is roughed out in my head, then roughed out in foam, and then final versions of the templates are made, and that's how it all goes together. A lot of times you guys see my videos where it's already done. I've already gone past the prototype area. I've refined it, I've made the final. So in my videos, I can be like, take part A and part B, put them together, now add part C to it. Well, when you're making something from scratch, that's not the case. And in this video, you'll actually see me build something with the skeleton, start to skin it with foam, not like the overall shape, cut it up and then change it to reflect exactly what I want. And that's the great thing about foam. If something is not working, go ahead, cut it apart, rip it apart, do it again. Foam is not an expensive material. It's not like an $80 side of leather that, oh no, I've messed this up and there's nothing I can do. You know, at the worst case scenario with this, you might have lost some time, but foam itself isn't relatively expensive, especially if you get my foam from Blick Art Materials. So I wanna show you what it takes in my kind of overall thought process of how I put this chest armor together. Let's go ahead and get started. For oversized pieces of armor, I make a foam skeleton, and I do that by cutting one inch strips out of 10 millimeter foam. These strips are gonna be glued together and will give me an overall size and scale for the project. At intersections, I'll glue on additional pieces of foam to cover the joints. If you don't have one, I'd highly recommend to invest in a cloth tape measure, because all these pieces are being custom measured and cut to fit my frame. I have a mannequin to help hold the skeleton, but as you can tell, it's not my size. So I'm constantly putting the frame on my body, that way I can check the size and the movement. Here's a couple photos of the frame, that way you can see its overall construction and the sizes that make it up. With the frame complete, I can now start to sketch out base pieces of the armor to skin the structure. I'll take these pieces and I'll hold them up to the frame just to help refine its size. After I have that figured out, I trace it onto some poster board for my final template. This final template is then traced onto some 6mm foam. The design of this chest piece is going to be split right down the middle, which won't really matter because later on we're going to cover it up with multiple layers. 
The armor pieces are then skinned onto the frame using some Weldwood contact cement and Bob Smith super glue. I start on the top and in the middle and I'm going to work my way around. To make sure I get the glue exactly where it needs to go, I flip the armor over. Then I'm able to trace around the frame on the back of the foam. Now the frame itself isn't all that sturdy, but once you add all these additional layers to it, it actually ends up being pretty rigid in the end. More adhesive is added to the opposite side, and now the front section of this armor has been attached to the frame. Now at this point I didn't know if I was going to have to split it up one of the sides to be able to get into it, so I'm being really precise with my measurements and my adhesive. Just like the front of the armor, I sketch and refine a piece of foam for the back. This piece will also be traced onto some poster board to create the final template. Like the front, two pieces of foam are going to be split up the middle to make the back. More of the contact cement and super glue are used to also attach these pieces to the frame. Now I know the video makes this look simple, but this is honestly not easy. Trying to get the armor to meet in the back and on the sides without having any gaps is a pretty difficult thing to do. So if you're trying to make your own armor and you don't get it right on the first time, don't feel bad. The framework is once again traced around so I know exactly where to put my adhesive. Once all the contact cement had dried I compressed the foam together and now the skinning process for the frame is pretty much complete. Now seeing a frame and seeing it skinned are two different things. So after seeing the overall shape I decide I want to cut some of this foam away from the bottom. That way this chest piece will fit my overall body a little bit better. This is also why when I do these types of templates I usually add more foam than necessary. That way I can trim away any excess that is not needed. Because I trim material away from the bottom I now need to round the stomach section out. I do this by cutting a hole in the foam and adding a new support structure at the bottom. Now it doesn't really matter because this hole is going to be filled and additional details are going to be layered on top. Now of course I found this super detailed reference for the armor. I test the design of the armor by drawing on some poster board before I draw on the foam. Numerous intersecting strips are cut out of 4mm foam just like a puzzle. Each foam strip had its edges sanded before being glued onto the chest armor. I'll be honest with you, I didn't really have a defined idea for this design, but it's coming together really well. At this point I realized I have to mirror this for the other side, and I should have drawn it ahead of time. But it's okay, I took some tracing paper and I drew around each one of these pieces. Using a graphite stick I colored on the back of the tracing paper. Then I was able to flip it over and draw hard enough to transfer the image onto some poster board. Now there are 80 plus pieces that make up this design, so I made sure to label them so that way I could line them up time and time again. After all the strips had been cut out, I then laid them on another piece of poster board. All the images were then drawn around and numbered, that way I could have a map for the design. The design can now be transferred onto the 4mm foam. All the foam strips can now be cut out and separated. And just like the opposite side, each strip has its edges sanded before being glued onto the chest. 
Now some people ask why I didn't do the score and heat technique here, which I could have, but on the test that I did it didn't come out near as clean as this process. Now the front of the armor had the design mirrored, which was cool, but it took a ton of time to set up properly. For the back, since it's not going to be seen quite as much, I decided to use the entire design for one piece. So just like the front, each piece is cut out, sanded, and glued on to match the pattern. Now because the pattern overlaps, I need to go around the perimeter and trim away any excess material. The edges are then cleaned up using my rotary tool. To create the trim that goes on the edge of the armor, I once again use some tracing paper. This really is a fantastic technique. It allows me to create pieces that are going to be just right for the final pattern. These trim pieces are going to be traced on and cut out of 6mm foam. Now because the armor is made out of multiple layers, I took a small strip of 4mm foam to cover them up. This piece is going to hide behind the trim, but it's another way to make the build look cleaner. The edges of the trim pieces are sanded down using my rotary tool and then sealed with a heat gun. Here you can see how that trim piece is used to help cover up that side seam. Any additional foam can be cut away. The same process applies to the trim piece that wraps around the back. Now if your build doesn't have to be exact, trim pieces like this are a great way to cover up any mistakes you might have or your seams. Now I'm going to start making the wrap for the shoulders, and this design is going to be cut out of some 6mm foam. Just like pieces on the helmet, rounded sections are easier to clean up with a rotary tool. The sides of this design are also going to be sanded and heat sealed. The wrap template is also going to be traced onto some 6mm foam. Now this piece has been designed that even though it's attached to the chest, I can still get this armor on and off over my head. The front two sections and the back can be attached to the chest armor using some contact cement. I wasn't really digging the front part of the chest, and even though it won't be seen, I feel it needs to be addressed. So I turned away a small section and cut another trim piece out of some 6mm foam. The designs were traced around and then glued to either side of the shoulder wrap. I would always recommend to draw around detailed pieces. That way you can make sure to get them lined up exactly where they need to go. A small bit of trim was added to the back of the shoulder wrap, and for right now, the chest piece is done.
Now at this point in time, the chest armor is not complete. It's still unfinished at the bottom and that's because I know in my head, I have additional details like his belt to add to it and I don't wanna add anything else down here until I get those dimensions correct. And this is exactly how I work with large scale costumes is that I don't finish one piece completely. I guarantee you I'll add additional details to this helmet before we're done. But what I like to do is get almost all of the pieces about 85 to 90% and then once everything is together, I can then cohesively add details all over it. Now, the other thing I hope that you glean from this video is the fact that I am not a magic genie with foam and I snap my fingers and all the pieces come together perfectly every single time. No, even for someone like me that's been doing this for over a decade, it's always a process. And every single build that you do, it's either a complete success, which is usually not the case, or it's a learning experience to add to your book of becoming a foam smith. So, if you are building any of my builds or utilizing some HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.